Welcome to Out of Home Insider, the loudest voice in out of home. It's funny, a lot of people stop and ask me, they say, Tim, what's that mean? What does it mean to be the loudest voice in out of home? Uh, a lot of folks assume it has something to do with being louder than other industry trade coverage. It actually has nothing to do with anyone other than the community that is out of home. Whether you're a big operation, a small operation, have unique marketing insights or a ton of out-of-home expertise, this is a platform to help the community grow, the community to learn. So I invite you to subscribe, follow, share. Please do all those things that help the, the community of out-of-home grow through this podcast, through the amazing guests that we have. It's all about democratization. And that's one of the reasons I'm most excited to be a part of the team at onescreen.ai, where we're bringing buyers and sellers together to help brands win. If you wanna learn more about what we're doing at OneScreen, visit onescreen.ai. Without further ado, let's go. Welcome everybody to the Out of Home Insider Show, a podcast like no other, hosted by the one and only Tim Rowe. Get ready to have some knowledge dropped on you and to be entertained because nothing's more valuable than food for your brain. So sit back, relax, we're about to dive in as the best industry podcast is about to begin. Man, the uh, really like the format of the show is kind of like uh, you know I, I kid that it's like Joe Rogan for out of home, but it's really just that it's a it's a it's a conversation, it's a platform for you to promote what you do, bank creativity, one minute brief, like out of home suffers from a creative problem. The people that use it creatively do a marvelous job, but a lot more people just treat it as like oh, it's like a display ad, but on a stick. Um, <laughs> You know, they don't, they don't take advantage of the beauty, um, that, that out of home can create with great creative, but like, that's your specialty, right? Like that's, that's what y'all do is come up with really creative stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think one minute breeze lends itself to out of home because essentially you know, whether it's on or offline, you're just creating one standalone piece of content and it needs to grab someone's attention within seconds. Uh, and it's the same. It's always been the same. To be honest, out of home has always been my favourite medium working as a creative in the industry with a graphic design background uh, and just a way of communicating something very quickly and effectively. And I think that if you can nail down an idea into billboard form, then that becomes a big idea, which you can then translate into TV and uh, social campaigns radio, et cetera. I think if you can get your big idea into one billboard, that's your core thought really. And I've always tried to do it like that. Not just not just through OMB, but actually when I've been working in industry, try and refine that idea down into one one billboard. And that's why I love the medium so much myself. And one minute breach is good for that as well because people can rely on their instincts. And because you rely on mm. instincts, it makes for a simpler ad that people relate to as well. Because we so since you brought that up, let me, uh, let me, I'm going to share, um, I have the production team that I don't have. There's no production team, but I've started pretending like there is, uh, I want to bring up the Kit Kat campaign because that's the one that I think everybody saw and got excited about. And, uh, and, and there's a little bit of magic behind that campaign that I'd love for you to talk to a little bit. It should be up on the screen now. But this Kit Kat campaign was a one-minute brief. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it started life as uh, it was on a Monday. I was thinking sometimes when we don't do a full-on brand, brand brief, it was actually advertised, hashtag your favorite chocolate bars. Mm. Uh, and Sam Hennig... Uh, the, the creator of this one uh, decided to do. In fact, I think this was in, initially when it was first created was uh, Cadbury's. Uh, oh, no kidding! Their remote blocks, yeah, uh, and because it was just a, a spec idea, and then and then uh, a creative director got involved and said, "Well, it works really well with take um, have a break, have a Kit Kat." So it, it was then changed uh, into that, and then posted out there obviously through one minute briefs and then it's just one of those things that just got taken just took off uh, within a couple of hours it was on ad week ads of the world uh, in you know lots of new york and things and, and it was all over linkedin and i, rem I remember it exploding 
blew up, right? 30, I, I did the, the, the little Google search there, 32,000 results on Google covering <laughs> the Kit Kat Zoom campaign. That's crazy, but it started out as an idea on, on Twitter and folks started putting ideas in and then this hatched and it went, it went up to yes, absolutely it haptic. Happened, it happened with a Guinness advert uh, as well previously that, that went on ad week. It's good that you've done the Google search. I've not even thought about doing that, but to see it on 32,000 searches is incredible, really. Uh, I knew it was, uh, I knew it was big. We've seen it on LinkedIn and people were tagging it in, but also in some ways, people get a bit worried when they don't get credited. But myself and uh, and Sam, the initial creator, were quite happy that it was just being shared without people knowing where it's from and stuff. Because it it's just an idea that people wanted to show their mates, basically. So when you get into something like that, then that's where it can go viral. Just like the Guinness Stay at Home campaign did. But both of them were so simple that you get it within a split second and you share it and you just, it's almost like meme-like. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's great to see. It's great to see that you've uh, Googled it. And, uh, oh yeah, certainly. Yeah. Cause we, we love showing it off to, you know, especially to, to new advertisers, to out of home that it, it doesn't have to be your logo and a phone number and, and, and a website address and like all this crap. Like you can just take advantage of the contextual moment keeping yeah. it super so what 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 do you think what's the key to keeping it simple not overthinking i think you know in the industry i've had people i mean i did a i did a billboard for jelly pots uh, a long time ago and, and i remember them the brand wanting to do half the page as a as the logo literally half the page uh, and we'd spent quite a lot of money on on photography to create this stunning visual uh, that would stand out um, and yeah suddenly you want to read it and you, you know as a creative this is going to make it not anywhere near as, as, uh, as stand out I mean there's probably arguments to say having the uh, logos bigger is better for brand recall but if you can create I mean if you look at that KitKat one don't think it even has a logo on that cat. Um, it's right. It's, it's literally just the product. It's not a yeah. product in a package. It's it is the literal product after you take it out, and it's kind of right. It's, it's the same there, color, right? like, but you know what it is. Yeah. That right. Like, give me a break. It's Kit Kat. Like, it just makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so sometimes less is more, and obviously they've got a lot of brand value already. You, which you can utilize, whereas other brands might not be able to have that. But if you can, um, the way we've done it with, because uh, we partner with Clear Channel on various briefs around the UK, and the way we've done it with them is communicate a message in five words or less. And those briefs are amazing because it, it refines it straight down. Uh, and also, when, because people do mock their ideas up on one minute briefs, but when you, when you literally give someone one minute, more often than not, you actually come up with something better than you'd thought of. We don't claim to change the world or anything. But so the process prevents overthinking the, the problem. Yeah. yeah. And you don't have, you know, obviously people will want to put telephone numbers and, and websites and, and things on, but if you can distill it down and also if you don't nail it in that one minute, you just do it again and again. And then if there's a few of you doing it, um, which is collectively shown through OMB is that because we're able to reward winners and things, the quality is often there. And, you know, some people leave it in the mind throughout the day uh, as, as they're going along and something will come to them. Or I often say I did something for Ladbrokes. I don't know if you have Ladbrokes over there, but I just changed the, changed the word into broke lads uh, and did it for a gambling aware company just that simple just post it out and and it gets its shareability and and i think and also the general public i think people track people or brands think that don't give the public the credit that they deserve because mm. people do just get it that people think that they need to be told uh and completely explained to what they don't if someone just gets made to laugh or feel sad by just a couple of words 
that's all you need to do. Then they'll look at where it's from. But it's uh, it's when you've got loads of stuff all over the place or you don't know what it even means. A lot of the time you're driving past or, or walking past, you don't have time. Um, but if it grabs you, you think, oh, look at that. Even if, even if it's just, oh, that's good. Right. Yeah. Just a moment of surprise and delight. And yeah. like, that's the power of out of home. It's the only place where you can create that contextual experience in the real world. In this moment in time, how I'm thinking, how I'm feeling as I'm passing a bus shelter, as I'm passing a billboard, it's only ever going to exist one time right yeah. now. Yeah. This is the moment you have that, that opportunity to create an impact. And if you waste it on bad creative, well, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, it might, it's just it's just that little raising a slight smile or something and it's just then it's in your head it's just you don't think it's there but you've seen it and uh, there was there was an example there was one thing I got taught at university with my tutor who used to like to push my buttons a bit because uh, I was tr quite calm and, and, and relaxed and used to try and work me up a bit and uh I was entering this billboard thing in Sir for Berghaus into awards. And he said, and I was really happy with it. And he said, it's all right. It's not going to win. I said, like, what? <laughs> he said, it won't win. Um, right, okay. He said, go and sit with him over there. Turn that idea into an award winning one. Um, it was, it was typo typographic. It was unexplored and the positive name was coming out of the thing. Like, right, okay. Um, anyway, we had the positive word with the billboard up against a mountain, and the positive word looked like it was on the mountain in the background. It was just stuck up cool. to the billboard. Oh, that's slick. Yeah, and, and, we, and then put the footprints of the trainer on the floor where you should view it from. And suddenly it had, it had gone from being an okay built and now I look back on that and I actually think I always reflect back on that time at university if I'm coming up with an idea or something could this is this just an okay piece of work or mm. is it one of those things that people take pictures of and share on Twitter and things so always trying to go that bit further but that's just a lesson um, that goes back to what we just said about that moment like oh that's that's uh, good or I might take a picture of it if not we can't get people taking pictures of everything and um, you can't always nail something, but you can just do something that's nice, can't you? That, that really uh, that isn't what you'd expect. Yeah. I, and, and there's so much focus, you know, in the marketing world around data and measurement and targeting and all these other things that if the creative sucks, none of it matters, right? Like, Oh, my targeting was perfect. Yeah. But your creative stinks. No one cared. Right. So your measurement's perfect, but it always comes back to creative. Nick, because we, we kind of dove right in at the beginning there, uh, maybe just back up a little bit and it, just tell, tell the audience who you are, who One Minute Briefs are, um, I'm bringing it up on the page, who Bank cre Creativity is, and ultimately how you work with brands to bring campaigns to life. I'm, folks are, have seen the Kit Kat campaign, but I'm sure they'd love to learn more about you and 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 bank creativity one minute briefs and how y'all work with brands yeah sure um well, well my name's nick emerson i'm the creative director and founder of the bank of creativity and one minute briefs and um, the the bank of creativity is more of a traditional agency model um however it's still very much community-led and the one minute brief side of things has almost outgrown it in terms of following so we've got thirty-three thousand followers on twitter um, along with quite a, tens of thousands on, on all various other channels as well. Uh, the way it works is at the start of every weekday, we'll set a brief. Sometimes it's just fun or for causes, and also sometimes it's for brands as well. Uh, and it's never changed. I started off at university. I had about seven weeks on a graphic design brief and didn't do anything for five weeks. I sat on YouTube and... You know, you know how it is, and me and my creative partner at the time uh, just procrastinated and things. And one day we set up this thing called One Minute Briefs and started doing them on foot. We actually started them off on Photoshop. Uh, people start laughing at them, um, at what we're doing, and, and more often than not, you actually do something 
really good that you'd never ever have thought of if you get, had an hour or a day. And then we took it to Twitter, uh, I think in about 2012, and it has just grown organically since. That over-the-shoulder looking thing like we had in university comes from when people respond, they're also posting to their own followers. So organically, people want more want, people want to get involved. And um, so let's say we do a brief. Yeah, as you, as you can see on, on the, uh, on the scrolling thing there, that we're doing a brief today with the Met Office to do all the weather stuff in the UK uh, for a climate change conference. Uh, I'm giving away a £200 cash prize. So we're giving away prizes each day when we work with brands as well. And... Yeah, we're getting hundreds of submissions, different creative outputs, and, and we're also only asking for people's a minute of people's time. People do Photoshop them up, but as you can see, they're quite simple, simple thoughts that look like they could be billboards quite easily. Sure. Only a few. And this is this is kind of like this is it's like a crowdsourced approach to creative. These folks don't necessarily work for you. They're just creatives on Twitter that follow you that can jump in and submit an idea? Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, it's free at the point of access to absolutely anyone, anyone in the world. So there's people all over the world getting involved. Um, yeah, giving away prizes. Um, it was never intended to be like a crowdsourced thing as such, but it's just grown where, first and foremost, it's grown as a community of people building portfolios, careers, contacts, confidence, that type of thing. Uh, and always, it's always been the exact same thing, always to create an advert, uh, just like it always was when we started it off. But if we can make it a bit more commercial, I mean, I spend so much time on it over the years and had to quit my job completely for it. And I have to try and earn a living from it. <laughs> so then we're able to give more and more prizes and the more and more brands that see that we're doing huge reach for brands on one minute briefs alone, that's almost self-promotion uh, for other brands to, to want to get involved. And obviously signing partnerships with Clear Channel and Met Office, Marmite, Pringles, um, all, these, all this continues to escalate and keeps us growing. Uh, and the engagement and reach just keeps growing as well to the point where we can do stuff internationally too. Uh, and, and I don't know if you've seen, did, a, did one recently with WWF, which had reach of half a billion. Wow. <laughs> and from one one-minute brief, a half yeah. billion people reached. Yeah, the initial, well. Before the campaign's even born into the wild and put into the well, real world. This one, this one, what came from a one-minute brief and it was one of those things. It was, again, the simplicity of thought. It was um, someone called Z. Anwar did an idea to take the animals off sports team badges. Mm. Uh, and I don't know, is it, is it on uh, this one? Sure. No, just giving it a little bit of an example of some of the reach that you have for, for yeah, some perspective yeah. there. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So we did, a, we did a brief with the WWF, and one of the... It actually didn't even win the, the brief, this idea, because it wasn't quite on brief. But if you can imagine, a lot of brands and sports teams have animals in the logos. Mm -hmm. So taking them off, really nice post. Um, it's going to get a lot of retweets and, and shares in its own right. But then I thought, wait a minute. Imagine if some of these brands did that on a particular day. That could be massive, even could if one massive. brand did it. Yeah. Uh, and then I started thinking, what if Twitter took the bird off? Uh, or <sighs> national sports teams do it and, and all that. WWF themselves have the panda, which was harder than you'd think to get them to take it. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> even though we ran it with them. So, um, but that simple thought and just having the knowledge to turn it into something bigger. Um, we were able to work with WWF and started contacting teams and brands, almost just asking people the question, will you do this? Mm -hmm. And uh, and a few people did. And then when, when we knew that we were getting a few people, we could tell other people, these lot are doing it. Will you do it? 
now we're get, okay. starting to get some so, critical mass. Yeah, and then now, hopefully, World Wildlife Day again next year, we'll go again, asking the same people, but then get loads more, and maybe even take it into the physical world, potentially an out of home, potentially actually taking animals out of signage uh, and things in shops and, and sports stadiums or anything. So um, it could be a, a, a thing that starts with a one-minute brief that just escalates into the real world. And that's happened a, a few times on briefs as well. So Nick, give, give, uh, give our listeners the skinny. You will work with brands, with agencies, with media partners. You'll work with just about anybody. How do they work with you? How do they get in touch? What's your uh, latitude and longitude? And uh, how do they work with y'all? Yeah, uh, well, a lot of people just get in touch with us directly through Twitter on DM, so at One Minute Briefs. Um, otherwise mainly through the website, bankofcreativity.co.uk or emailing interest at bankofcreativity.co.uk. Um, the way it works is essentially you get to take over the feed for the, the entire day and it's all about your brand. We're, we're often trending on Twitter so and sometimes we work with an existing hashtag which we can help make trend or is already trending and we can trend alongside it. Otherwise, we just make our own. Um, the, the accumulative effect of people responding to the brief creates something. If you get so many tweets in a day and a hashtag, you're likely to get into trending territory. Because the content itself is very shareable, quick, it's the type of stuff that people want to start sharing, as we've said in the sort of billboard style. And then that has an effect as well. So if one entry starts to generate lots of retweets, that gets us into trending territory as well. So you essentially just uh, get in touch with us. We don't need much to start a brief off. We just need a blurb about what you want to sort of promote or what cause it is, uh, along with logo and social links. And then we pretty much just put that on the website uh, and then we set it off on the day and then give give prizes to the winners so it's a really simple thing to do with minimal resource for the brands to get involved in um, but the reach is just it was never intended to be like this but it is I mean it's like that that the yeah, OMB produce however many ideas when the brand receives it they get all those ideas at the same time and we retweet it to all our followers and then the brand can share as many as they want. In the normal process, you'll probably work with an agency. You'll never have that public reach in the first instance. And you won't, you'll be able to share one piece of content on your own channel. It'll get a few retweets, obviously, but in this process, you're getting a mass social reach campaign as well as generating loads of great instinctive ideas as well. So, it's win-win for everyone involved, which is which is nice, and and for our community, it's nice for people to work on on brands and and get involved. And a lot of the brands enjoy just getting involved on social, sharing gifts and all that. So, yeah, I can't I can't wait to to have somebody to be able to do it with. I've got a few ideas on folks that uh, that we're working with over at One Screen, and I, I think it's a great way to because most of these ideas they never get past like the creative director's desk, right? Like they they die on the cutting room floor. Here, at least, like you can you can almost split test it, right? Like it becomes a, a quasi A B test of like what do people like, what what's resonating. I've got all of this content, all of these things going on, that's good for your brand. Uh, and especially to have people engaging and, and getting to play with the parts of maybe things that weren't accessible to them. Otherwise, I'm sure you have lots of young budding artists that wouldn't normally get to work on like big iconic brands at this stage in their careers, but this is a place and, th and there's great ideas. Like the one that you described with the world wildlife federation, uh, Nick, I think what you're doing is pretty special. The community aspect we particularly love because that's a, that's a goal of ours here at Out of Home Insiders to just create a community where anybody has a voice uh, on, a, on a level playing field. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. I, th I think what you've just touched upon there is, is important and actually been able to gauge what is engaging. Um, mm. 
what you think is what you put out there as a brand, you might think is, is the best thing for you. But if you look at the actual engagement on certain posts, last week, someone chose a winner. And I looked at the winner and, well, there was a decision between two winners. Um, and one really liked this thing and it was quite branded and it was, it was nice. It worked for the brand, but it was okay. I, I looked mm-hmm. at it and didn't feel anything. I looked at the other choice. It had nearly 100 likes, retweets, or, or whatever, com- compared to the other one that had about two or three. So, and that one was the real winner, if, if you know what I mean. But you look yeah. at it, the most simple thought. Uh, and I think sometimes as brand managers, you can be clouded in your own judgment in that works for us. But what if you did something really simple and, and stand out that you might not expect? It can still work, be branded, but I, I like that. And the way OMB works is that you, you gauge how people interpret your own brand. Yeah. We're, we're, I, what you think yeah. might be totally different than what the audience thinks. How frequent yeah. that's, that happens all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and it's a good way to, to be able to do that and actually stand back and look what people think and the, and the way that they come up with stuff rather than putting out your own voice that people may not relate to. It's a great list, litmus test for any brand. Nick, I really want to thank you. I know we're coming up to the top of the hour here and you've got more one minute briefs to get out there into the wild. So I want to thank you. We'll make sure to link everything uh, for folks to get in touch with you to do their own one, one minute brief below. Really appreciate you being here today. Awesome. Thanks very much for having me. Absolutely. If you found this to be helpful, interesting, please share it with somebody else who could benefit. As always, make sure to smash that subscribe button down there in the corner, and we'll see y'all next time. Quarter century, I finally came to my senses. I finally got my hand up on the tinted Benz kid. I see the world clear through my tinted lenses. With the dream and the drive, the possibilities endless. Now print that, send this all the way to Tokyo. Take a trip down south, down to Mexico.